So let's get to that. Obviously, you saw the uh, uh, the uh, thumbnail or the picture to the video before we got going here uh, with Curtis Polk's shirts. And uh, Col Curtis Polk, he's the real MVP. Curtis Polk is the real MVP here because, uh, as you see, he wore that shirt. And uh, let's go to Nick Geddes from uh, Nick Geddes News and on3.com is where this article I'm reading from is at, where it says 2311 investor Curtis Polk made a statement ahead of Sunday's Southern 500 at Darlington, pinning a piece of paper on the back of his shirt, which read, please don't ask me about my charter. I don't want to disparage NASCAR and lose it. So let me go ahead and tell you why I like that quote. It is a massive calling of the bluff of NASCAR because NASCAR has been holding this idea of they can take the charters away anytime they want to from these teams if these teams keep you know acting up. It also shows the level of control NASCAR wants to have. I'm actually going to get to that in just a minute with a Denny Hamlin quote, but it shows they're over they're overreaching uh, and just their need for control uh, and some greediness, which I'm going to get to a quote too with uh, Michael Jordan, uh, and I think Adam Stern is in there as well. But uh, it just shows the overreach. And I like that he's calling their bluff because they keep saying, hey, we're going to take these charters away. Well, that would be quite possibly the dumbest flipping thing NASCAR could do would pull these charters. It would literally kill the sport. Nobody would invest in the sport if they pulled the charters. So I like the fact that Curtis Polk wore, wore this shirt and said, go ahead and pull them. I dare you. I double dare you, MF, or if you've ever seen, you know, you know what movie I'm talking about there. So, uh, I like the fact that he's basically calling their bluff. And, and for that, Curtis Polk gets my real MVP. But let's go a little bit further down uh, the article because Denny Hamlin had a reaction to it, uh, apparently on his podcast. Same article, though, by the way. I would choose not to speak. This is Denny Hamlin speaking. I would choose not to speak about his shirt, but it kind of speaks for itself. And I can't believe he actually wore that, Hamlin said. They do not want you speaking negatively. That's a new add to the charter agreement. We'll see how that goes. NASCAR has got their stance, and the teams have theirs. We'll just see where it goes the next few weeks. So that right there shows you that NASCAR is putting extra clauses. It just gives you a little peek behind the curtain of how NASCAR is behind the scenes. NASCAR and the Iron Curtain, they want to control the narrative. They want to put clauses in there where you can't talk bad about NASCAR. It is the most dictatorial thing that I've ever seen. Uh, in sports, it's just uh, they want to keep it their sandbox, and you have to do what they want you to do. You have to put the numbers where they want you to put the numbers, because uh, and they don't care about what the fans have to say about it either. That's actually the reason I brought up the numbers. We were talking about this in the Discord today. Shout out to Elite Precision and Bumblebee. I think that's who I was talking about this with. But remember when NASCAR moved the numbers back and the fans said, we hate it, we don't want to move the numbers, we want to keep the move, uh, numbers in the center, and NASCAR said, okay, no big deal. We'll just move them to the front. So how about that? Because uh, NASCAR uh, doesn't care about they just they, they don't care about what the fans have to say. They just want to do what they want to do, and they want to silence everyone who disagrees with them. So it looks like everybody's agreeing with them. So that's a nice little look behind the curtain there that they're actually trying to put a clause into the charter agreements where you can't say anything disparaging about NASCAR. What an absolutely ridiculous clause! If the, if the owners let that clause stay in there, uh, they're absolutely uh, insane, uh, in my opinion. But NASCAR wants to get this deal done sooner rather than later. And Denny Hamlin did say the next few weeks in his quote, and uh, this is where we're at with the charter agreements right now. Teams have secured a commitment from NASCAR to increase the amount of media rights revenue they receive in the next term per Stern. That'd be Adam Stern of Sports Business Journal. NASCAR notably announced $7.7 .7 in media rights deals with Fox Sports, NBC, Warner Brothers, Discovery, and Amazon for 2025 through 2031. Teams currently get 25% of the broadcast revenue. Not bad. Tracks get 65% of the broadcast revenue, and NASCAR gets only 10%. So they're putting that only 10% in there. That only 10% is misleading because NASCAR owns half of the track. So if you cut that 65 in half and you add 10%, by my math, you get 47.5%. So NASCAR is getting 47.5% of this $7.7 .7 billion. And all the teams want 
is for NASCAR to give a little bit of that money back so they, they can get close to that 35% that the tracks that Marcus Smith owns, basically, the other 35% of the money that goes to the tracks because Marcus Smith owns the other, basically the other 35% of the tracks. There's a few there's a few independent tracks out there. I, sh- I shouldn't say that. But uh, NAS- Na- the, the, Na- the NASCAR teams want to get closer to that 35% number. So I thought that was interesting. And, and the way that it's, uh, the, na- the way that NASCAR is, throws it out there, that they're only getting 10% of the TV money that's cap. Like they are getting actually 47.5% of the TV money because they own half of the tracks, even though it's through another business and you know, whatever. So here's Michael Jordan's thoughts on it. And this, this is the one that I really think is one of the big sticking points here. And Michael Jordan had this to say, if you had permanent charters, cause that's the sticking point, right? They want permanent charters so that they can get uh, permanent deals with TV money, not only TV money, but license. Let's, let's get to, the, to this quote and I'll get into it. If you had permanent charters, then you could create a revenue stream either with new investors or with different types of sponsorship that would subsidize that type of variance between ownership and the league, Jordan said. That's a big, big miss right there. If you don't correct that, the sport's going to die, not because of the competition aspect, but because economically it doesn't make sense for any business people. And that 100%, I'm glad Michael Jordan came out and said that, that 100% is where I'm at with it. NASCAR needs to just go ahead and make the charters permanent. That way they can make permanent deals. Basically, if they make the charters permanent, the teams automatically become a part of NASCAR and they can organize these deals. Like you've got your TV deal over here and then you could have a licensing deal over here where NASCAR, if they even if they quote unquote steal a sponsor from a team, the team would still get some money from that because they would have like the, a very similar breakdown to how you see the tracks and the teams and all that with the sponsors that come in and sponsor NASCAR, i.e. Coca-Cola, Amazon Web Services, the NASCAR main sponsors and things like that. So I think Jordan is dead on and I'm glad he came out and said that. And it's super interesting. But then in the same breath today, and I'm on Jayski now and they're quoting the Sports Business Journal, in the same breath, NASCAR turns around today and says – Uh, NASCAR hopes to reach an agreement on the new uh, governing charter system with its premier series teams this week to avoid having the talks spill over into its playoffs, which start this weekend at Atlanta, according to sources. The sides have been negotiating for two years on the terms of the charter deal. Teams have secured a commitment from NASCAR to increase the amount of media rights revenue and receive the next term but have sharply disagreed on the number of fronts on a number of fronts. And there were signs of continuing tensions this past weekend at Darlington raceway. He's referring to Mr. Polk's shirt there. Once again, the real MVP. So NASCAR is hoping to get this deal done before basically the playoffs start. And that's important for a couple of reasons. You've got this documentary being filmed and that might seem like a small thing, but in the off season, and, and even if you just go to F1, what launched F1 in the United States and, and, raised it to this huge level that F1 in the United States is now is that documentary series on Netflix. So to me, this documentary thing is not a small thing. And some of these teams have given uh, NASCAR permission to film them. But if this charter deal doesn't go through, they're going to, they have the option to revoke those rights. So from a, and why this is important from a editing standpoint, that's an absolute nightmare because you don't know which storylines you can go with, which things you can, which things you can actually use. So even the stuff you have right now is going to delay the editing process. And that's going to push that out of the window. Whereas the, basically the series would launch while the season is still going on. Whereas if they get it filmed and done now, they would have time to edit it and chop it up and get it properly organized to happen in the off season to continue the conversations and build some momentum for NASCAR going into the 2025 season. So it might seem like a small thing now, but I feel like in the off season, it's going to be a much bigger thing if they can't get this thing done. And if they can't get that uh, documentary done, also it would be the negative press that they would kind of be worried about. Negative press could overshadow the playoffs itself and it could overshadow the playoff champion. Like it could just totally ruin the playoffs. If things get really nasty and really ugly, not only that, but if teams get to a point where they feel like they need to do something and let's say they throw a monkey wrench into the playoffs and completely ruin it, that that could, you know, you know, that could be another thing that NASCAR is worried about. So that's another reason they want to get this deal hammered out and this deal done. It goes on to say, and here's an interesting thing uh, as well. And then I'll jump into the uh, chat. Teams received the latest draft from NASCAR this week as sides continue to haggle on deal points around things like how much 
uh, they say teams will have over major competition related rule changes that NASCAR could make over the coming seven years from 2025 through 2031. The big thing I think that stands out to me here with that part of the quote is NASCAR basically forced this new car on them, whereas the teams had their own fab shops. And according to Denny Hamlin, at least he's been very vocal about it. They're not saving any money at all. If, if anything, they might be spending more money with this new car that is supposed to save money. So from Denny Hamlin's perspective, they're not saving any money. So they would want some input on future moves like that. I think a lot of the teams feel the same way. Denny Hamlin, I'm just using him because he's been vocal about it. People familiar with the matter said some teams appear to be at a point or nearing a point where they will sign uh, the NASCAR offer. Uh, still, it was unclear whether a deal will get done this week. It's also unclear whether all teams will ultimately stick together and sign at the same time or whether some could hold out and try to negotiate for better terms, a scenario that some in the sport are very leery of. So there you go. Basically, what they're telling you is some of the small teams are ready to sign, go ahead and get it over with. And then you've got some of your bigger teams that are going to hold out and try to get a better deal than the smaller teams creating sort of a cast system in NASCAR. And if I was a smaller team, I would just go ahead and hang with the bigger teams because you don't want to get that. You're already at a disadvantage with the bigger teams. You don't want to get a worse deal. So if I was one of the smaller teams, I would just go ahead and stick together. Like you might as well just all stay together at this point and get it done. But the other thing is uh, uh, they're talking about, they might get it signed this week. Uh, it says here, still unclear whether a deal will get done this week. So they, according to NASCAR, they're hopeful that it'll get done this week. So very interesting stuff as far as that goes. You've got basically one side saying uh, they're not happy with the deal. And then you've got another side saying that we're, we're within a week of signing this thing. Uh, and just, just very, very interesting things going on, especially with the uh, protests from Curtis Polk. So uh, I thought a lot to unpack and a lot to cover there. Uh, and I wanted to lead off with that. But now we'll jump into the chat and see what you all want to talk about. Like I said, poll question is up. Does NASCAR get this charter deal done before the playoffs are over? Like I said, in that one article, they said they're close to a week uh, week away and it might happen. 9% saying yes, 91% saying no. So once again, another dynamite poll uh, from your boy here. Uh, 33 votes in right now. Go ahead and get your vote in if you'd like to. If not, don't feel pressure to. It's not a big deal. OJ and Toothpaste. I wonder how many wins Creed has on Earth, too. Sheldon Creed, man. He's got a YouTube channel, by the way. Just saw it today. Sheldon Creed has a YouTube channel. So if you're a Sheldon Creed man, check out his YouTube channel. Uh, he didn't have as many views as I would hope he would have. So I, I will say that. So uh, everybody, if you want to, go over there and show Sheldon Creed some love. 